So once again, it is time for one of my absolute favorite traditions here on the channel, hunts here in the Hunter Classic that reflect our real life hunts. And as I'm headed to West Virginia for their archery opener, we're headed out here on Settler Creeks. I think that's the most similar map to West Virginia here in the Hunter Classic, armed with a loadout of the flinter bow and items, most like what I'd use in real life, non-range finding binoculars and a range finder. And we're gonna see if we can find anything good. And inevitably, the first animals of the hunt are not going to be Whitetail, but Roosevelt Elk. Still any other though, so we're still going to try to take them out. And since we don't have the range finding site, got to get a quick range on the cow. That's 30. If we can get a shot here fairly quick, the bull shouldn't be able to hear that. So the thing is, got to aim between the 20 and the 40 yard pins. And that dropped her a stone dead, so that'll be perfect. That guy can keep on working his way in then. And just to clarify, much like will be the case in West Virginia, we don't have a gun or anything else, so we had to take that cow with the bow. Otherwise, probably we either only get her or end up getting nothing at all as they would spook. So this guy's trying to get real close real fast. And minus the weird glitchy thing on the corner there, we are two for two, dropping a Roosevelt Elk. <laughs> now this guy landed kind of weirdly, almost flipped upside down. That was a neck and lung shot, so not too bad. 166 score for him. And by the way, not having a gun, should we run into a trophy bobcat, maybe feral hog, something like that, it could get real interesting. And we'll just have to see where this hunt takes us. But real quick on our cow, that was also a neck shot at 30 meters. And hopefully we can get into some whitetail. Well, go figure, we got a giant elk coming in now, 320 to 365. Got stickers all over the place. Most of them will help him. I think only one that I can see there's actually gonna hurt him. Hopefully that guy's going to be close to that 365 mark. That may actually end up being one that we do a euro mount of. And I wasn't going to call it in because, of course, we're trying to get Whitetail. But that's a really nice bull, and I'm glad we went ahead with it. I don't know, with all those additions up by the crown tines, this could go a number of directions. But that's probably going to be single lung. Going to have to track him a little bit, and maybe he can lead us to the Whitetail because clearly <laughs> we might as well be on an elk hunt. Oh, and actually, he went down right up there, so must have been lung liver. Pretty solid deal. And I'm quite looking forward to just what the score of this is going to be. Because all those additional stickers, anything behind the crown tine, well, that one might actually be a negative. But anyway, that will actually go to help him. Yeah, he's got a couple over there. I don't know. <laughs> well, let's just find out. Lung and liver at 24 meters. 355, that definitely is going to be a skull mount for us. And we'll take a quick trophy photo. So not too bad. I think that really shows the width of the frame well. If these tines were longer, we'd be looking at probably a 370. That will see any of these in West Virginia. But happy to actually make a lodge edition right at the beginning of the hunt here, and we still haven't even found a buck. I mean, any bucks an improvement, 55 to 80 for this guy. And definitely, like with that bull elk, not ranging him, I think maybe wasn't the best idea. So we're well inside of 20 here. Kind of awkward walking through that brush. That's going to drop him. And that's important because right back there, we picked up an 80 to 100 kilo buck track. That was fleeing. I'm kind of guessing when we got up and ran, realizing that was a lung liver shot that spooked the buck. But hopefully he's not too far away. And the time to bring this guy in maybe allows him to calm down. But double lung at 14 meters, 60 score. If that's the smallest one today, that is okay with me. I kind of think our buck might be coming right at us here. We just had a no, oh, that's a doe. We just had another grunt out ahead of us. Really need to get this down, much like that cow elk earlier. And because we had another grunt, we're sitting here, we have relatively fresh roaming tracks in the initial. That buck may come wandering in too, so I kind of think that rock right down there looks like a good spot to sit and wait. We'll grab our doe real quick, and hopefully just sitting there and calling, we can actually get both bucks to come in. So. Double lung liver, that's exactly what we need to ensure she doesn't go anywhere. And, uh, I know for sure we got one coming this way, maybe both. So this would be our new buck, and certainly moving in the right direction with that. Kind of awkward, I don't like to pop up and come to full draw with the buck stopped, because they'll get on you way quicker, but because we may be sort of up against another one coming in, and he had moved anyway, gonna get to full draw and get him down? And I think... Probably we just wait. We give it like three, four minutes. If the other buck doesn't show up, we get back to tracking. 
But I wouldn't be surprised if he's coming into this. So no sign of him anywhere. And it's been about five minutes, so I don't want to get so far behind him. We spend the rest of the hunt just tracking that one buck. So we'll just go ahead and grab this guy and get back on the track. What do you know? Footsteps, could that be him? We don't have a gun. And like, it very well could be staring us down right now. The only thing we may have to our advantage, this slight little hill we're laying behind, maybe could save us. It ain't moving and I don't love that. But we don't have a choice. Like, we gotta just wait this out. That's a doe. Are you serious? Second time one snuck in on us. I don't know where it's at now. Still hear it right up at us. Sounded like it was like five meters away. It's all the way down there. That should be around 20. Of course, we don't have any kind of shot opportunity, so we'll just keep on sneaking over here. Probably she'll walk out from behind this tree. Whatever direction, actually turn back that way. And somehow, that wasn't double one. Frankly, I think we're going to have to just wait on that. That's a 108. I don't want to get so far behind our buck that we, you know, end up losing him. So we'll deal with that. Maybe we find that later or something. But we may, uh, may have to lose that one. Now it's starting to feel a little more like West Virginia. We've got three bucks in about a 400 meter area. Got caught up to this guy. But unfortunately, it's also starting to feel like Settler Creeks because our max estimate buck, only 100 to 125. So, oh, uh, arrows are important. Can we get an arrow on this guy? I can't believe he doesn't see us. We really lucked out there. And by the way, in the spirit of real life hunting, we probably better go back and track that though. So love, lung liver stomach for him, 115 score. And hopefully we can stumble into the doe on the way back. She ran this way, but probably we'll have to track her down. We actually managed that. Fortunately, she was right on her path back. So no track and Nita got her single lung obviously at nine meters. And I think we can just go ahead and maybe hop across the creek here. See if we have anything over on that side of the map. And right back to square one to 55 to 80 for this guy. I do think he'll be a little bit better than that 60, so maybe that will still remain our smallest buck. Forgot to range it. That's about 26. And I think we may be getting away with one again because he is so small. A bigger buck's probably staring us down and may be taken off by now. Do you want to get that shot though before he turns right at us? We'll take the broadside angle for sure. And already our ninth kill. Lots of antler. We had the cow elk and the doe. Otherwise, between the couple of bulls and a bunch of average to below average bucks, we've actually had a pretty fast start here on Settlers. Finally, a decent looking buck, and he might be real solid. 165 to 190. High rack looks like an 8x8. And without the aid of the spotting scope to get zoomed in real close and try to identify deductions and stuff, we might be down to pretty much just trying to get the shot and then finding out in the harvest screen. Kind of have a thought here, because things have to be a little bit slower with the rangefinder and everything, we're going to crawl off the side of the road here, get into where we're actually getting the benefit of camouflage, and that might just buy us an extra half a second or something to get the shot, and maybe that will make the difference. So we should pretty much like right off the road get it. It's not impacting us yet, but anywhere in here, I'd expect this to turn green. So that's what we needed. Right next to this tree is probably the perfect spot for us. I do see at least one sticker there, some decent time length on the left antler. Definitely deductions on the right antler, but that's going to be probably close to 40. About 30, actually. I can't move down any further because of the way this hill is. But since he's on the move, let's get to full draw. Hopefully he'll stop for us. We can get him right around 20. He's going to stop right there. Should be maybe 25. And that is a real solid... West Virginia or Settler Creek's buck, depending on uh, how you want to look at it, right on the road. So what are we looking at? Definitely narrow spread, that's going to hurt him. I'm thinking like maybe 172, something like that with those deductions. Double long at 21 meters. 169, dang. Wasn't he 165 minimum? Well then, uh, <laughs> we'll go ahead and get a trophy shot. Sounds like we have a bull elk to call in. So we kind of got to grab him by the ear there, just the way the land lays, but I think that looks pretty decent, showing off the flinder bow, showing off... Frankly, it looks like a way better than 169 frame. Obviously, the stickers and like shorter times on the left antler hurt, but managed to get that set up pretty quickly, and that potentially is important. 
if that bull elk's still around. And we actually may have a case here to be close. Actually, I think there's a real good chance of it where the buck had more antler than the elk. Just gonna go ahead and try to get this shot. No range finder needed at that range. That'll bring that guy down almost like exactly where we killed that buck. And pretty decent deal. Got a really solid one finally. And a little bull elk to boot. Double lung liver at 11 meters. That's gonna be 167, two inches less than our whitetail. And we'll just keep on scooting down along this road in the south. I want to get basically like down in here. This tree stands one of my favorite areas on the map. And then hopefully late in the hunt, some of these fields will have whitetail, maybe elk, other stuff just waiting for us. So finally our first gobbler of the hunt. Actually, really good weight estimate. But that double beard pretty much guarantees he's going to score 48, something like that. Now this year, we won't be in West Virginia during the fall turkey season. So this is kind of just a bonus opportunity, but about 25 meters. I don't think on this little hillside we're going to have any camo. He just stood up and noticed us there. Didn't get the lung shot, but obviously he's not going to be going far. And add one more species to our tally today. Must have been really close to getting lungs too. Just body shot, obviously, 24 meters. 49 score as double beards go. A pretty decent one. So finally another buck. And I would say, in all likelihood, the last buck of the hunt. Don't think we can really... I don't know if that 18 was him. Gotta be pretty close, close regardless. So if we can just get a shot lined up here, who would have thought we'd be going back to the trophy lodge with a Roosevelt elk skull from this hunt? Not exactly the uh, vision going in, but a really solid buck, that 169. Obviously, as I say in every one of these videos mirroring real life hunts, if we find something like that in real life, that would be insane. But we even get a trophy lodge edition to boot. So not only... Do we get to add a 355 inch elk skull to this lodge? We also got to take down a 335. So you see that 336 there? I think there's another 336. And then having removed the 335, we can get over there. That'd be really cool. We're slowly making progress on getting towards all these elk skulls being 350 plus. So our newest one as we kind of get around everything here is going to be that guy right there. Really cool with like all the stickers and stuff for him to still go 355. Those short ties, like that's a 370 frame easy. You can see it. Like that's the 336. Really wish we had somewhere better to stand. There we go. Look how much bigger that frame is. That was a really solid elk and looks really good up there next to all the other ones we have. But really fun hunt. Settlers Creeks actually produced a couple of cool kills. And who knows, maybe we'll find ourselves back there sooner rather than later. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. As always, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time.